everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. I hope that everyone out there is having a beautiful day or night, regardless of where you are. We are streaming live right now. Uh, I want to touch a very touch on a very important topic: pain between the shoulder blades. Uh, notifications are going out as our chat rooms will be filled up. Uh, but we're talking about poor posture. We're talking about that pain right between the shoulder blade area, quite nagging. Uh, people out there who play tennis, who do their uh, aerobic activity, uh, throwing ball, shooting basketballs, uh, just doing your sports that you love to do, guess what? Overaccumulation of these rhomboid muscles can cause what they call rhomboid tendinitis. Now, many of you are saying, well, how do you get tendinitis in a rhomboid muscle? No one ever talks about tendonitis in the rhomboids. Well, guess what? Any muscle has the ability to develop, to develop a tendonitis. Most tendonitis that you think about is in the elbow, okay, like a tennis elbow, or a tendonitis of the shoulder uh, by utilizing the shoulder. Uh, I'm going to review some really cool stuff with you today and explain to you a little bit more thoroughly that why you're having these chronic problems most likely is related to cumulative trauma dysfunction, cumulative trauma disorder of poor posture, pronated shoulders, forward head posture. Uh, and you're going to be amazed by the time you, you realize that, wow, I could, I could have been preventing these problems from occurring. Let's move in. Let's move right on. Here, you see this poor lady holding between her shoulder blades, nice and inflamed, nice and irritated. And I will move through these real quick. If you look at the rhomboid ma minor and major, that's the muscle we're going to focus with. Uh, the rhomboids uh, attached, as you look at the minor major, uh, primarily in the lower part of the neck in the mid thoracic area, right across into the inside of the shoulder blade or the scapula. And primarily the main function of this muscle is to retract, is to bring the shoulders, uh, uh, shoulder blades back closer together. In other words, if you look at me here, and I'll stand up a little bit. If you look at me here and you see me going forward, that's pronation. And if you see me bring my shoulders backwards, that is retraction. Well, guess what? Those rhomboid muscles, including the, the middle trapezius, but we're not going to go into because the rhomboids play the major role. That's what, that's, what, that's what brings your good posture. That's what allows your shoulders to come back. That's what keeps your head back. That's what prevents that rounding of the shoulders. That's what prevents those tight chest muscles that's pulling you forward. Let's move forward. If you look at the rhomboids, this give you a little better understanding where they come from. Again, from the spinous uh, processes into the inside, the medial border of the scapula. And you can see when those muscles shorten, guess what? It brings the shoulder blades back. Now realize, we spend more hours in a forward position, looking down, texting, okay? writing, reading, driving, we're in this position the majority of our day. And we're wondering why we're developing all these particular neck problems and mid-back problems. And this is, this is the reason why, because of this poor posture. So uh, you can look at the little white specks there. And the little white specks uh, on the inside of the shoulder blades indicates inflammation. And I just put that there just so you can understand that's generally where most of the inflammation occurs because as the shoulder is moved side to side, up and down, realize that everything we do with in our hand, the shoulder blade moves with it. So if you're doing something too much, too quick, not, not, not giving it enough rest, you're going to develop a tendonitis. Now, what is a, a tendonitis of the, of the elbow is usually people that write a lot, usually people that use a lot of work with their hands. Uh, those kind of people develop tendonitis, tennis players, whatever, but it doesn't have to be tennis players. So the tendonitis is inflammation and irritation of accumulation of stresses that we're putting upon these rhomboid muscles. Uh, if you look here, this particular model, you may not be able to see it right now, but you'll be able to look back later. Uh, this shows pronation. Pronation means those shoulders have gone forward. The majority of people out there have pronated shoulders. Women, because your breasts, breasts have weight, breasts pull your, your body forward against gravity. As gravity is pulling it down, brings your bodies forward, our shoulders forward. When our shoulders go forward, our head goes forward. 
we start developing a lot of these particular problems. So as the shoulders go forward, the rhomboid muscles stretch. So as they stretch, they elongate. They become weaker, causing the opposite side of the body, the pec muscles, which I'm about to show you, to become tighter and to become shortened. So realize that muscles work hand in hand. When, when something weakens and stretches, something on the other side usually contracts, okay? Because it's just the, the way the muscles uh, balance out in the body. So if you look at this, this is forward head posture. You can see the ears way, way out in front of the shoulders. You can see with that forward head posture, he is going to have rounded shoulders as well as stretching of many of the muscles in the, in, the, in the upper back area, including the rhomboids. This picture just is an idea for many of my listeners out there. You have seen this many of my videos, but for our new listeners, I need to explain this very thoroughly to you. Our head weighs 12 pounds for every inch you go forward. It's an additional 10 pounds. So as your head just goes forward two inches, your head is really 32 pounds of weight because those muscles, ligaments, and tendons below it has to hold up 32 pounds of weight. When you go three inches forward, it's 42 pounds of weight. And that's what's wearing and tearing, causing herniated discs, pinched nerves, and all kinds of problems. Upper cross syndrome. Upper cross syndrome, what is it? Basically, you've got tightness in the front. Look at the, tech, the tight uh, pectoralis muscles, the tight chest muscles. That is the number one muscle that's tight that causes your shoulders to go forward. I'm going to show you how to correct that. Don't worry. I'm not going to leave that out. I'm going to show you stretches, how to strengthen these weaken muscles and how to stretch these tight muscles. Now, if you look on the right side and the bottom, inhibited rhomboids. Okay, now the serratus anterior can cause flaring of the shoulder blade. We're not going to go into that in this program. You can look at my video on serratus anterior uh, protracted, uh, shoulder, protracted shoulder blades. Um, but the inhibited rhomboids are weak, and the majority of people have weak rhomboids because you spend time in this position. On your computer, Texting, looking down, two pillows behind your head, driving with your arms out in front of you, you're always going forward. The rhomboids are stretching. That is a serious, serious issue. And guess what? Your medical doctor is not picking that up. You need to understand this or you are going to be sorry. And I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to help you and tell you the truth. I want to see every one of you stay well and be well for a lifetime so you don't have that rapid degeneration, that disc degeneration. And I don't want people turning around and trying to fight with me, trying to say, well, stem cell therapy can help repair disc degeneration. Well, if you want to go through stem cell therapy, then don't think that way because don't ever think about trying to fix something that the body's broken down because the body is a body. You can't replace parts in the body like you think you can. And guess what? Anytime a human being does something to Mother Nature, you're looking for problems. If you look here to the left, good posture. To the right, forward head posture. You can see that rounding of that shoulder, which I'll show you in just a second on a different picture here. Uh, here is, again, inhibited rhomboids, just another picture. Uh, here shows a picture of the tight uh, pectoralis minor. Uh, we've spoken all about... Uh, brachial plexopathy, we talk about uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, very common when that nerve comes out of the neck, it gets caught underneath that pec minor because when those pec muscles are tight, it rounds the shoulders. Now, you know what I'm talking about. It rounds the shoulders and you can't afford that. And we'll talk about in just a second how to fix that. Here's another common thing that many of us do. All right, no good. You need to be really, really aware of this. Now, if you're going to do something for a short period of time, I have no problem with it. But when you're doing something for four, six, eight hours a day, five days a week, you are setting up your body for potential serious problems in the future. Sitting down, you can look at the X's and the plus. A lot of people will sit down and they'll round like this. And other people will try to arch their back like this. You don't want to do that. If you're going to sit, get a good lumbar support behind your lower back. Support that lower back though. Bring the shoulders back. Try to tuck in more from the chin, not from the head. And you need to be very conscientious of that. The majority of people out there have these conditions because of poor posture. Now, this is what we talked about earlier. Pronation is the shoulders rounding forward. Retraction are the rhomboids that we need to bring back. Here's a great exercise for the rhomboids. 
Uh, you can use a can of beans. You can use a can of anything. You can use no can. Uh, just kind of getting down there, arching the back a little bit, starting down low and bringing it up. And you can go back to these exercises. Excellent for the rhomboids. You need to strengthen those rhomboids. A good eight to 12 sets, two to three, I mean, eight to 12 repetitions, two to three sets daily. These are really good for you. Uh, here is another picture here of the chest stretch. I like to talk about this because we need to stretch those pecs. Stretch the pecs, strengthen the rhomboids. Stretch the pecs, strengthen the rhomboids. You can see the different angles from uh, neutral angle to high to low that will work different fibers of the pectoralis major and minor. Uh, here is a great one for the rhomboids. Anytime you pull, you're strengthening those rhomboids between the shoulder blades. Uh, here is a little something you can do if you don't have an exercise. You can kind of, uh, you go through many of my, my videos on my channel, and I've recently put quite a few up on there without using anything. Uh, I've talked about th the one with the V. I know many of you have seen that. Uh, but just taking your arms back and squeezing it together as you, squeen, as you squeeze, as you pinch, push those the elbows kind of back down to squeeze those muscles. Do those sets of those every day. They make a big difference, and you'll be surprised how it will get you to sit up a lot straighter. Here's another one. Uh, you can use real light dumbbells. You don't have to use heavy weight, but you see what the young lady is doing there, left to right. Just kind of get in that area. Make sure the key to this exercise is don't bring it back. Uh, in other words, don't bring it back. I'll try to if I get in the camera here. Make sure your arms stay up near your shoulders. Okay. A lot of people will cheat. And they'll bring their arms further back, lower. Don't drop your arms. Keep them out forward, up up where your shoulders are. That way, you work the round boys. You won't work the lats. Uh, here's another position just to give you an idea. I'm telling you guys, young ladies, uh, when you, you when you do this exercise, you're really going to feel good. You're really going to see a big change in here. Now, I love this. If you grab someone, your spouse, your friend, your loved one, your cousin, your neighbor, your mother, your father, I don't care who it is, you get up like that and you should pull that muscle up there. You are really going to open up those pec muscles. When you open up those pec muscles, that's going to allow the rhomboids to do this. Watch my face. Oh, that's right. Those rhomboid muscles will be real happy. They'll be happy because those pec muscles are causing the rhomboids to stretch. When you stretch out those, those pec muscles, those rhomboids are going to be able to function a lot easier. Another little uh, great little tip, uh, you can grab a TheraBand. Someone can hold it on the other side. You can wrap it around uh, anything you want and just kind of get in the habit of keeping those elbows bent and pulling back. That's a set. That will work those rhomboid muscles. I think that's a great one too. Another way, one you can do, you could take a TheraBand and you could just see how she's holding it and just bring her arms to the sides. In other words, her right, her right arm will go to the right, her left arm will go to the left, and she'll pull it apart. And when she pulls that apart, uh, that will really help work those rhomboid muscles. So, I really hope that this will kind of give you a basic good understanding of rhomboid tendonitis. Nobody talks about that on the internet. I've, I'm telling you, you will not find much about rhomboid tendonitis here on YouTube. And rhomboid tendonitis is a chronic inflammatory overworked condition from poor posture, forward head posture, uh, doing things repetitively at home, uh, Whatever you may be doing, but I'm telling you, this is a major epidemic. So the medics, what are they going to do? They're going to give you ibuprofen. They're going to give you muscle relaxers. You need to really address this. Now, and I say this from my heart to, to all yours, to all you people. Not only the chatters here, but I'm going to have many people look at this video. It's going to go right on the channel. But you really need to be aware of that forward head posture. Now, there is no one on the Internet that talks about this more than I do. But I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm five years prior to the major epidemic. You will start to hear this all around the world, and you will start seeing young kids with serious herniated discs, degenerative disc conditions, degenerative joint disease. You will start seeing significant arthritis 20, 30, 35 years younger than you should because of the forward head posture. Remember, the head has weight. If the head is not balanced with the spine, the spine will degenerate because it's trying to overwork, it's trying to compensate, it's trying to make up for that weakness, that extra load, and it can't. So what happens? It's called Wolf's Law. Wherever there is area in the body, the body will lay down more bone 
to try to solidify and strengthen and hold that area as the body's thinking we need to do something to, to preserve this, to help this, because it's weak. Whenever we have something weak, the body tries to lay more bone in. If you lay more bone in a joint, it's arthritis. It's just plain arthritis, and the joint starts de to degenerate. So uh, I wanted to say a lot of love to all my listeners out there. I appreciate you being here. This is really late at night on my end. Um, let me go ahead and remove this. Um, I ask you out there to uh, subscribe if you haven't. Um, I ask you to uh, go ahead and check out my my channel, uh, Motivational Doc. Also check me out uh, my fan page on uh, Facebook, Motivational Doc. And go ahead and like that. I really appreciate that. Otherwise, I just want to wish uh, all you blessings, lots of good health. And from my heart to yours, really, go through my videos. I get many, many questions, but I will tell you that there's nothing like having good posture. It's something you need to have. It's something you need to preserve. It will make a big difference in your future. God bless everyone. Have a beautiful day or night, and uh, I'll go out to the live chat with you and speak with you for a little bit, but otherwise, we'll catch up with you real soon. Bye-bye now.